Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Koviak. Today, I'm going to take a minute, cover a couple things about the RV, or actually I should say my travel trailer, and uh, some of the stuff, some tips for you on this, basically, is what we're going for. We're pretty new to the whole um, RV kind of lifestyle or doing any of that kind of stuff. This is our first one, but we've had it for a couple months. I've already run into a few storage issues that I wanted to solve that I came up with some great ideas for. Um, I also found some issues there that I was able to fix myself that are worth taking a look at uh, and trying to do. And I also found some ways to save some money. So I'm going to kind of break those down and show you a little bit here for you. Uh, again, keep in mind we're new to this. We haven't done it a lot, so there may be some more of this stuff later on. But uh, if you have a travel trailer or anything like that, these are some things that you might want to check into and see if they can benefit you. So I thought I'd do a video on it. First off, um, I want to talk about the hitches here. Uh, the equalizer for hitch i did a lot of review on this um a lot of review and this right down here is the equalizer four point hitch okay there's the two bars for it right there and that is the actual hitch system right there this thing is phenomenal all the reviews say it's one of the best ones out there um not only is it a um a uh, stabilizing hitch so it stabilizes out the rear of your truck um, I'll put an inset picture in here to show you but it also with these four bars in there you can see they're solid steel not hollow that's four solid steel bars this thing's like a hundred pounds but those bars go in and they lock in here and they go to your trailer and you have these tightening bolts here that cause this friction in there but the the stabilization in this thing is just incredible you can't beat it now most of the dealers when you find these on the dealers and stuff, they want literally, they're, they're like, uh, you know, they're a thousand to $1,200 installed. You can actually, I'll put a link down below for this, but you can get this on Amazon for under 700 bucks. And then you can put it out, build it yourself. It's pretty easy. A couple of bolts. And then you use these washer systems uh, to level it out based on there. And it's really sweet, simple, and easy. Uh, the only thing I had to do is now the one I'm going to give you a link to, you can get a ball on it. It already comes with the ball on it, or you can buy the ball separately. The one, when I bought it, it was out of stock with the ball so i had to buy the ball separately and i had to have somebody put that on because i couldn't do it myself um i didn't have the tool that would reach in there with that kind of socket so i would recommend getting the one that already has the ball included on it um but that's that hitch that hitch is absolutely incredible now if we go over here to the actual there it is right there that's our uh, alpha watch uh, it's a uh, alpha wolf um 27 rkl is the model number of this and this has got the extreme arctic edition uh it's got the the bigger uh furnace and everything it's got the insulated underbelly the whole deal so we can use it for the winter time um right up here in front you can see this is where the mount is for those brackets for those other parts of those bars for that equalizer for stabilizing hitch the thing is just a beast but it is incredible now a couple things i noticed the propane cover here that you're seeing right here this thing it is loose see how that flops around on there well that's also where the power cord for my electric jack is and that sits right underneath there i am going to i have not got it yet i ordered some but i'm going to take some of this corrugated uh, guard material here then I'm going to put it around this so that that is not sitting on that power cord when it's there and not going to damage it little stuff like that that you see um, another tip that I was told and I had them and I got them but you can see I got jack stands under there as well too um, they're barely resting on, actually they're not right now because I was just working on stuff um, but I'll leave those where they're barely just barely sitting on this um, you know, barely, they'll be barely resting on that jack stand. Right now they're off, but having them where they're sitting here a little bit uh, kind of prevents all this crap from going on if you're on dirt, you know, for while you're, while you're at home. Uh, it just kind of supports it and makes it a little easier. I'm still not going to let that all the way up, but I'm going to take some of the pressure off of it. Not that it's a mandatory thing, but some people said that it, it definitely makes it nice. And uh, if you have the jack stands, it works out pretty good. Now, a couple things to note <coughs> that are worthwhile here. I'm backing up so you can see it. Uh, one thing we have found already um, in the one time that we've used this is that it can get kind of stuffy in there when you're cooking and doing things and when it's raining out. When it's raining, you can't open your hood fan or your, your hood vent fan um, up because it's raining out and water comes pouring in. See that first white cover right there? That's actually a hood vent cover that I got, which is really cool. Um, I'll put a link for it down below for you. I got it on Amazon. It took me a whopping six minutes to install. But if you look at it from this back angle back here, you can see in there that it's open invented there i'm assuming you can see that but basically what that does is that allows you to open your vent cover 
in the rain and you can have it open if you look close at the top of it i can't i'm not climbing up there right now i'm getting a ladder out to do it but on the top of it there's actually the shape of the hood vent top is actually in it so it goes right up into the top of there which i will show you here we'll take you inside and show you um but what it allows me to do is it allows me to actually open it up well, it's, you know, when it's raining, we can have this open. Or even right now where it's sitting here, instead of it getting kind of that mustiness in there from being all closed up, you can see I have the slide is, you know, tucked in. Everything is closed up in here. We're not using it right now. But what it does is it allows me to right now have that vent open. And that vent cover is actually opening right up into that pocket of that. So it's opening up, you can see. But now you'd have to have this closed up like that anytime it's raining or just now as it's sitting here and you're getting no airflow in here whatsoever well with having that cover on there i can now have the rain or even when it's raining out i can have that open i can turn on my fan right here i can run it i can do whatever i want to do and it's not affecting nothing no rain water is going to come in there with that cover so that's a very beautiful thing and it's very cheap very easy to put on and now i get good airflow in here so that's one thing now in here in the bedroom, uh, yours, again, mine is an Arctic Shield edition, so I have all that um, under insulation, and I'm wondering if that's the reason for this vent this year, too, but see that black heater vent right there in the bedroom under my bed? See where it comes out? Look at I have all this storage, this huge storage underneath the bed, and they put that stupid heater vent right there, and it literally comes out to like right here through the floor it's not even in nice and close it comes up and out and it's like well really how stupid what a dumb place to put it it is just that little corrugated aluminum stuff so anything i put in a storage bin could damage that i went and i bought a cheap little garbage can for like a dollar 99 from walmart that i thought would fit the size i took my uh my regular just utility knife and i cut out a notch around there and then i just basically put one screw in each side and glued this down to the floor now it's a guard anything we store in here is not going to damage that heater vent so just a little tip for you that might make life a little easier um you know for you if you run into that i'm sure not all of them have it uh but if you do that's one kind of option uh, that could make life a lot easier for you. Another thing we did notice when we were towing it, uh, which I will try to show you, but we found that putting these little rubber that you get at Walmart, these little rubber things inside of here, uh, make it really nice. Your stuff is not sliding around in there too bad. Uh, we got bunches of them. They're all over in here. We got them stashed everywhere. They're, they're definitely a nice little convenience uh, when you're towing this stuff. It keeps everything from sliding around. And I'm going to show you a more advanced version of that here in a little bit too in the, in the uh, storage, uh, uh, in the slide through, in the pass through. Now here, speaking of that, one thing I did not, this is our only pass-through that we have, is this one right here, okay? And it's pretty good size, but this is the only option we have for pass-through. We're going to have lawn chairs in here. We're going to have some other stuff. I did not want to have to have my gray water and my black water stuff inside of here. I did not want to put it inside that that uh, that slide-through that slide with everything else that we're going to have in there. So what I did is I came back here and I made this. And I did what I did here. Now, I would not recommend, I'll actually put a link to the one I would use below. Now, I bought this locally because I thought, hey, that'll make a great idea. And it did, um, but they're way cheaper on Amazon. But what I did is I bought this black uh, steel case. This is a steel, steel case. I used four inch U-bolts right here. They go from here. This is a one inch by one inch piece of steel. I got it at Home Depot. It was like literally, it, it cost like, I don't know, five bucks for the piece. And I just cut it off with my uh, cutoff wheel to the length I needed. I went through this U-bolt goes through that steel thing. And then right, I drilled right through the box and clamped it together. So this whole unit is right here and will never move. It will not budge. Then what I did here is I took this thing. Let me get my keys out for it so you can see it. And... It locks, very sweet, very simple. And inside, I have all of my stuff that I need for my gray water. My, my, I got my gray water hose right here. Um, I have my sewer my sewer hose. This is just a spare sewer hose, or the one they gave us with it. Uh, we don't use it, we use this one here. My adapter caps, all my uh, chemicals. I have my, uh, um, my sidewinder kit right here to run that out. And you can see down here, you'll see that one screw. 
Well, basically, I just 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 a self-tapping, you know, size 10 sheet metal screw that I just zip and zipped it right through there, right into here. You can actually see it in there. Just a screw to lock that thing to this, and now nothing moves in there. Sweet, simple, and easy. But now I have all of my gray water and my black water stuff all secure, set in here, and it's not inside of my stuff, and it doesn't take up any of my storage room that I needed. Beautiful, simple setup, and works fantastic. Now. When we come back around on this side over here, another simple tip for you that almost got me in trouble was pay attention to the distance from where your slide is to where things are. When we originally parked this here, you can see the tire tracks. I had this moved over farther. I was about to put that slide out and my wife started freaking out and yelling at me because I would have smashed the slide right into that tree, not realizing how far it comes out. Pay attention to that stuff. Make sure I carry now, I actually carry in my truck a tape measure and I know the distance from my slide, how far out it comes. So when I park somewhere, I can double check that and make sure we're gonna be good before I move that. Because when you're inside the unit moving your slide out, you never know uh, if there's an obstacle, it could just be a power post or something here it's going to get in your way so this way you can double check that beforehand like i said the first day we got it we almost wrecked it by doing that uh so something to keep in mind and take take consideration of now on that pass through over here another thing that benefited me that may or may not work for you i figured out that two melt crates which you can see here slide this out of the way two melt crates fit perfectly up and down between my rafters now, your unit may be different. I don't know, but for me, that's pretty awesome. So I can really stack two on top of each other. They don't move. They're, they're, there's enough room for me to lift them off. Bottom one is all my uh, fresh water stuff and the water filters. And the top one is all my electrical connections and adapters and all that stuff. Um, and then, But it, they stack together nice. So you can fit a lot in there. Notice the camouflage stuff that they're on there. Same with this bucket. What these are is sheets of... Let me show you here. This is a sheet of... Uh, hydro turf it's stuff that I used I had it left over from making my when I did my bow fishing boat deck uh, it's the same stuff they put on jet skis but it, it sticks pretty good and it doesn't move very well so I have it underneath there everything I put in here I'm putting on there like that it'll keep it from just randomly sliding around on here this is my tool bucket all the tools all the pieces uh, you know you'll you'll need this stuff lap sealant uh we got ours when i went up on the roof the first time when i got this thing i went up there to double check how the roof was done and i immediately had to break this out and get the caulk gun and use it and seal spots that were not properly sealed around my vent fans and my air conditioner up there um they were not you know there was an op or opportunity for water to get in there so i had to reseal those already um i already had to use this black uh rtv silicone sealant here same thing when we got it now i actually just did it today because it's been so cold so i haven't been able to but see this right here i had to redo this right there it's still tacky and wet i just did it but all these other ones you can see up there there's a little bit in that corner every window here like this has got that little bit right here they all have this in there well that particular one right here they didn't do it there was none on there none whatsoever so I had to redo it myself. Otherwise, water could shoot straight down into there. Um, and so I actually had, you can still see the residue there where I had electrical tape going across there to protect it until it was time for me to have a warm enough day to fix that. Uh, so I just did that. So go through your whole entire unit and make sure everything is sealed well. Make sure everything's got sealant around it. Make sure all your vertical seams. Make sure you have sealant around here. Check your roof real good. Check all that stuff. Make sure um, on the front that everything is sealed good all the way up. Just go through, take the time, and check them. Because the people that build these things, they're absolute morons. I mean, I've never seen such pure garbage design and it doesn't matter what they are and i've watched a lot of videos on this stuff and it's i don't care if you're buying a grand design an aerostream stream I, I don't care what it is they're, they're, they're built with screws and glue and garbage is what they are so just understand that you got to check them out yourself real good make sure everything is sealed up well um now on here what i did this here again something just simple that i needed um I got a set of leveler blocks right there. I also have a set of leveler blocks here underneath the front. When we brought it home, those are all I had, so I left those there. Well, I knew I wanted to use those for leveling, so I built this block right here, which will go right there. That is going to be my block that I will actually set on there. It's almost the same height, just a smidge shorter, but what it is is it's got that AstroTurf on top also, so when that plate is sitting on here it will not slide or slip off of there or anything it's going to kind of compress like you see the screws do into here and kind of set itself into there um 
This is made junk stuff that I had laying around. Those are treated uh, four by six posts. I cut them. I want to say that it's 12 feet long from top to bottom as you're seeing it. That's a one by eight across the top. And then these are uh, 13 inch or 12 inch two by fours on the bottom. These are, th this board here is not treated just because I didn't have a treated one. But these two are treated and these two by fours are treated two by fours like that. So that's the base that I put down on the ground right there. And then I just took a piece of rope that I had laying around and put a handle on it so I can carry it. Now I can throw that right there and I can use that wherever we go to put the uh, the trailer tongue jack on there and I can have my leveling blocks back so sweet simple easy uh, kind of thing to do makes it really simple uh, but make sure like I said I'll try and put a link if I can find where that after or this hydro turf stuff is because I'm really impressed with how good it works the other thing you can do is buy uh, car floor mats. Car floor mats are what I originally saw people using, and they work really good. Just get the cheapest ones you can find as long as they're kind of a rubbery, and they will do the same thing. They will cause the same kind of sticking type scenario. But again, my tool bucket just got all the tools I would need in here. You put it on there, that thing doesn't move, okay? I can't slide it. Cannot move that. It sticks very well. You can see it just locks it right down and does a great job. So that's one too. Now, one other thing I want to show you, actually, I got to stop and put you on a tripod and then I'll come right back. All right. Now, before you get into that, I do, you notice this wood that's laying around on here. I have these pieces here. These were um, some extras that I had laying back in my back shed that I got to still put away as I was figuring it out as I just got it all reset where I wanted. But park your RV if you're not on pavement park it on top of a two by six or two by eight. The two by eights are better. I, these, what these are is two by eights, but find something to put it on top of for your wheels to keep your wheels off the ground. This may be my first RV, but it sure isn't my first trailer. I've owned dozens of trailers and I'm telling you, get the tires off the ground. Um, keep them away from that moisture. It'll protect them from rot. They don't see it. It's just a thing to do. Get them up. So that's what I did. That's why these are out here. They're leftover pieces from me cutting them to the length I need. Um, to be make sure I got both wheels on them and set them on there. So um, it's a good idea, very simple and easy to do, but it's a huge difference for protecting your tires. Now, thing I wanted to show you, some people can fit their their um, sewer hoses inside their four inch post on their four or their four inch hollow bumper. I couldn't fit my fittings from that oh that Camco hose that I I'm using wouldn't fit in there. Actually, a lot of them don't fit in there. Uh, so I didn't have that option. So I built this box like I showed you um, and I keep all my black and gray water Everything is in there my flush holes all that stuff everything's inside of there So I wondered what to do with the bumper and I found a solution for what to do with that to solve another problem One of the problems that I have is what do I do with a ladder because I need to be able to get up on top and clean that awning off and I need to be able to clean off the top of my slide. If you put that slide out while you're camping and a pine cone or a brancher or something or a stick falls on top of there or an acorn and you go to close it, that will ruin those rubber seals. So you want, before you close your slide back in, you want to make sure that that's all cleaned off up there. So I have a long pole, um, you know, that I can use for washing. It's a four, extendable three to five foot um, pole with a brush on there, which I can use to clean that stuff off if I can get up there high enough. Well, I found a solution on Amazon. I'll put a link for it down below for you, um, but it fits right here in my bumper. This is brilliant. So what we have here is an actual folding expandable ladder. Lock, lock, lock. Hit it there. Hit it there. Lock the bottom too. Right there like that, and you have an actual ladder that you can see that is an awesome, super stable ladder that will let me get up high enough to be able to inspect anything on a roof. Now, I can't actually get from here onto the roof without having a monkey climb. In an emergency, I could, but I wouldn't do it that way. But it does let me get high enough to clean off my awning, gets me high enough to clean off my slide, and it gets me high enough to be able to inspect anything on the roof. Um, and it gets me high enough to clean anything I want or do anything I need. So this ladder is incredibly valuable in the fact that it does fit inside this ladder that you see fits inside of this bumper. That's straight up amazing. That's that's pretty incredible. I'm, I'm so excited. All aluminum, very lightweight, very simple to do. It's got the lock levers on the bottom. You hit those to unlock it like that. Pop that, pop that, hit that, hit your steps. See how the thing starts to come up, come together. Just like that. Pull that up. Make sure I don't have any leaves in it. 
and it comes right together just like that. There it is. And I take this, where's the side I put down all the time? Right there. And I can fit it right back inside of my bumper, put my cap back on, and there it is. So it gives me a ladder that is completely out of the way and stored, not interfering with my walkthrough or my pass through on there, not having to worry about it. It's just there if I ever need it, when I need it, which will be every time I'm camping. So I want to clear that awning off, check that slide and clear that slide every time. And it's simple. I don't have to fight and carry one every time. The ladders on the back of the RVs are, are nice. I wish I had one on here. I, I don't. I don't have that luxury of having one. Um, this was a very affordable, simple solution that fit that bumper, and I loved it. So these are just a couple tips for you, a couple things to think about to make life easier for you that I thought was uh, worth showing. Like I said, we're no experts yet, but as I'm getting this thing ready and we're learning more about it, I'm finding these things that could have been a lot better. This this thing, in my opinion, should be standard operating equipment on every one of them. Again, I'll put a link down below to a box that'll fit all that stuff and do a great job that's actually cheaper. I paid like 90 bucks for this one. You can get these things for like $35, $40 on Amazon, and they're, they're just as good. So I'll put some of that link stuff down there for you below um, to some of these kind of things. But, you know, these just make life a little bit easier. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.